Hi everybody. I just wanted to clear something up. On looking at my video, I noticed that the left side of the screen I had cut off. I have to move my tripod over. But I just want to show you when I'm asking you to make a rectangle. This is the one that I'm showing you. So when you click on the rectangle, now I'm holding my camera in my hand, so this is what you get. You'd pick the first one that would make a rectangle. So there's the crosshairs moving around the screen. So you make your rectangle. And after you finish making the rectangle, you have to click up here on this arrow to get back to your select button. Otherwise, you're going to just keep making rectangles on the screen. I hope that helps. I was going to redo the whole video, but I figured I would clear it up with this. All right, so we'll continue on. Thank you. Bye. Hi, everybody. This is Pat in the paper closet. Today, I'm going to be showing you a little bit something different. I told you I would be showing you how to make the photo mats for your, I don't know if you can see this, but for your Little Things album that you've made. Now I told you I could show you how to make it on the program for one of the cutters, which is the Silhouette Cameo. I'm going to show you how to get the software, install it, and how you can use it just for printing purposes, not for cutting since you don't have a cameo. Some of you may have a cameo, and those who do will know how to set it up for cutting. So first of all, the first step would be to download the software. I want you to go to silhouetteamerica.com. And then you would click on software click on get software oh, there it goes okay I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit now here it says download this is the free version you don't pay for it now if you have a Windows a newer version of Windows I this is Windows 10 so I used Windows 64 bit if you have an older computer, a laptop or a desktop, I would pick the 32-bit. If you have a Mac, you pick the 64-bit. Then you hit download. It'll download to your computer, into your downloads folder. I hope you can see this. It automatically, well, for my computer, it automatically picks downloads. I don't know what you, your default folder would be. Just check up here where it's putting it. And once it downloads, this would be what you would see once it downloads. I mean, Silhouette Studio version 4.5, blah, blah, blah. EXE, meaning it's the executable file that you run to install it. So you would double click on this. See, I already have it. Do you want to replace it? No. So it's not going to show us the download, but just follow the prompts. Uh, one prompt that will come up will ask you if it's okay to make changes to your computer with this program. You have to click yes. And then we'll continue to download. And when it finishes, you will have a icon on your desktop or your laptop it says silhouette studio so you'll double click on that and that will take you to a page like this now this is a blank page first thing you want to do would be let me close this the very top little button over here let me get a pointer over here, the very top, is the page setup. I'm going to click on that. Now, mine, I've already set it up, but this is what you'll do. You'll be setting it up as if it was a Cameo. I have the older Cameo. Since September 
2012. So you click on Cameo, unless you have another machine, the, the newer version. Then under Cutting Mat, you would click on Cameo 12 by 12. Under Media Size, right here, we're going to choose Letter because we're going to be printing, so it has to be 8.5 by 11. Okay, don't change any of this. Now I want you to scroll down to the bottom. And you see here where it says Show Print Border. Click on that. I don't know if you saw the change. You see the blank page? Now watch when I click on Show Print Border. You see? Meaning that's your, your items, your... Whatever you're putting on this page has to be inside of this border in order to print on your paper. Okay, so that's all for that. Now we're going to go to this little box, this little boxes up here. That's the grid. You want to show the grid right here. Now we're going to keep this at, well, yours won't have anything in it right now. Or it may come up with four divisions. You want one inch in this box, the spacing. And down here you want two. Yours might say four. See the changes? We don't need all those lines on there. Watch the change. Well, that would be four. That would give you fourths. I'm going to click on the little tiny arrow here next to it to two. Now we have halves. That's all we, we only need these lines as guides to get our maps straight on the page. And that's all we need in here. Registration marks we won't use because that would only be if you had the cutting machine that was going to try to read this page. You don't have that, so we have no registration marks. Okay, our page is set up. Show print border is checked. Now I'm going to close this up. Okay, now, I have, let's see, is this the one? Yes, this is what we're going to be making. You can fit three mats on one sheet of 8.5 by 11 cardstock. I would recommend you start out, try to print it on copy paper so you don't waste your cardstock. It's too expensive to waste. So all your testing you'll do on copy paper. Okay, now the way we make, you see it's a, the square, the gray square, and then this line that looks like stitching around it. So we're going to make two boxes. Okay, now this is your screen. Now you're going to go over to here. These would be shapes. We want to draw a rectangle. So we're going to click on this first one that's blue right now. And you see the little crosshair that's in there? I hope you can see this on your computer. The little tiny crosshair right there. Now if I click and hold it, you see it's making a rectangle. Right there. Now that's a solid line, which is what we want for the gray part. Now the size, if you look up here, this is going to give you the size it is right now. We're going to hit this little lock to unlock it. And we're going to make this four and a half. Just delete that. Type in 4.5. I can't see around my camera here. Nope, that's a six. 4.5. No, that's not right. Sorry, 4.25, four and a quarter. If we make them bigger, they don't fit on the page. And then we're going to delete this one and make it 6.25. 6 6.25. So we have a four and a quarter, 4.25 in the width, and 6.25 in the height. And now you have to press enter. Now watch the box over here. It resized it, see? 
Now along the side you can see it says 4.25 on the bottom and 6.25 on the side. All right, now we have to click on the arrow over here, this little arrow, where it's going to keep making boxes. We want to get out of the shape icon. So now we're on select. So now we have our box, but we don't want it clear. It's just the same size as the background now. See if we put it on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to this little art palette, color palette, painting palette, whatever it is. Okay, now we want a gray. Now if you want a dark gray, you pick one of these. I like the lighter gray. So I'll pick that one. Okay, that finishes the background part of the mat. Now, we're going to go over again to our shapes over here. I'm going to pick another rectangle. There's our crosshairs. See it moving right there? Draw another rectangle. And this time we're going to change the size to... It's going to go right inside the outer border. So it's going to be 4.0625. It doesn't show the 5, usually. Yeah, see it's gone. But it's there. And the height we're going to make... 6... Point oh two five. Don't forget you have to hit enter in order to change it. Whoa, what did I do? Somehow I got 720 inches. Alright, I'll start over on that one. Six point. I think that's what it was. I missed, missed the wrong key. Six point oh two five. There we go. All right. And again, we have our measurements along the outer edge, 4.062 and 6.025. Oh, that one gave us the full number for some reason. All right, lost my mouse. Okay, now again, we have to get out of the shapes icon and into the select icon, this arrow over here. We click on that. Now you could take this. We're not going to put it on top yet. Now right now it's a solid one. What we want it to look like stitching on the outside of our map. So we're going to go up here. To, this is the lines, or better yet, let's close this color palette and go to this little line icon. It shows different types of lines. Okay, now if you click on this, I usually pick this one. It seems to work best. See on did you see a change on here? Now we have little dotted lines. Okay, we're gonna change the thickness to about two. That's one and a half. This you gotta be careful. It's hard to get this in the right spot. 1.75 2. That's at two. Now we're in the lines palette. That was the type of line. Now we have to hit the color that we want our line. That's this little box. A colored blue box. Now we want the stitching to look black. Did you see it change color? It went from red to black. And that's all you need to do for the lines. Make sure this is set at about two. If you make it any larger, any higher, they're just going to look like big fat lines. They don't look good. Okay, we can close up this box. Now we're going to take our stitching and we're going to push, whoops, highlight it first. Drag it onto our mat. Now, <clears throat> in order to center it, Put your arrow up here at the top. See my little cursor? Hold the button down and drag over both pieces. Now they're both highlighted together. You're gonna go up here to this a little alignment button. And you're gonna press the center one. It says align center. And then you're gonna press the align middle. 
and that will center it on the mat that you've made. Now at this point, you don't want to lose the uh, position of your stitching, so we're going to right click and we're going to group. You see group down here? Group. So that made it all one piece. See? We can move the whole thing around without leaving one part behind. Now I want to show you something to be careful of. In order to see this up close, so you can see if you're in your print lines, you're going to hit this little plus button up here that says zoom in. It's going to bring it in tighter. You can scroll up. Now see this line all, goes all the way around the page? That's your, your limit for your printing. You have to stay within that line, these outside lines. See there right there? Goes around the corner. So we're good on that one. Now we're going to make another one. So let's click on the, this button here makes it fit to the window so you can see the whole page. I'm going to take this and highlight it. Now it's all grouped together. I'm going to right click, copy, then we're going to right click again and we're going to paste. So we've made a copy of this one. Now this one will fit at the bottom, so we can turn it, and this is where the lines on the grid come in handy. Bring it up to one of the lines, so you can see if you're, click off it so you can see. See I'm crooked, the line runs down below it over here. Click on it again, this little green dot, make sure it turns to an arrow, a circular arrow, and try to line it up on the line. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You can also try hit, holding the shift button down and then pressing the arrow. Whoop. No, that took both of them. Holding my shift. There we go. That kind of moves it in, well, it's supposed to move it in smaller increments. It looks a little straighter. Pretty well on the line. That's good. I'm going to move this into the bottom corner over a little bit. Now we're going to zoom in again. We can see if we're within the print area. Scroll to the top. That one's good. A little space in between the two. Here's our print line over here, so that's good. And here's the print line on the bottom, so that one is also good. Now we're going to go back to fit to window, right there. Now again, I'm going to highlight this one, right click, press copy with your left mouse button, right click again, press paste with your left mouse button. Now this one we want to resize because you can't fit two across here, so we can make a mat for a 3x5 photo. So in order to do that we'd have to make it three and a quarter. You see we're back up here to our size. Delete what's up there. Three point two five and the height would be five point two five. I have a six, do you see that? Good thing I looked. Five. Okay. Now we hit enter and it's resized it. So it's showing 3.25 at the bottom and 5.25 on this side. Now we can line these two up as close as we can get them. Okay, click on that little plus over here so we can check the print area. That one's good. Here's our print line over here, so that fits good. It looks very good. Fit to window. Okay, now it's all set up. At this point, you could save it to your computer. Go to File, go to Save As, Save to Hard Drive. That's important. 
This is going to put it on your computer. Click Save to Hard Drive. Now, Ma and I have made a folder. Mini album photos. If you need to make a new folder, go right here to this little button right here. This little box in my pointer. See, it says new folder. You would click on that. It's going to create a new folder in the same area that you're in. Mine, I happen to be in a folder because it's called in the paper closet. But you would rename it. You could name it Mini Album Elements. This would be Maps. And then you could name it Gray Matte Black Stitching. And then you would save it. So you would have a new folder. Then you would click on your folder. I'm going to go back to my folder. New, I mean mini album photos. And I've already saved this one. It's called uh, there's a Black Photo Maps White Stitching. So I don't need to resave it. I have this already. So I can cancel that. And that's all there is to it. You have it created and saved on your computer. Now if you want to print it, you go to File, up here in the corner. You go to Print, right here. This is the, uh, this is what's going to print. We see it's inside the print lines. Now you click on Print. Now you would pick your printer. Mine is a HP Smart Tank. And you can click on Preferences, whichever printer you picked. Now mine, I don't know how yours would be arranged, probably different subsort. But I have borderless set to off. I don't want it borderless printing because it'll print right off the top of the paper. My paper type, I always pick other matte inkjet paper if that's available to you. You want some sort of, if it has cardstock, pick cardstock. If not, something close to a matte inkjet paper. And put your quality at best. Right there. Go to the bottom, right here, print, click OK. Now put your paper, I would suggest printing this on copy paper first. So put your paper in your printer and pick print. Now I'm not going to pick print because I don't have paper in my printer right now. But that's all there is to it. You let it print. See how it looks. If it looks good, you put in your cardstock and print it on the cardstock. Then all you have to do is cut them out. Take a pair of scissors or a paper trimmer and cut them out. And that's all there is to printing them. Um, something else I wanted to tell you, what was it? Oh, if you're trying to find this file later on, you would go to your folder icon. This will bring up your PC, the contents of your PC. Now you have to remember where you put your folder. Mine, I know where mine is. It's on my external drive. I have mini album fold photos. Click on that. Now mine, if you click up here on view, yours probably looks like details or something like this. If you click on icons, you can see what they look like. So this is the one we just made. No, that one's a white stitching. Gray, black stitching. This is it. <clears throat> and that's all. You would, If you want to open this again, and you don't have Silhouette Studio open, I'll show you. I'll close this up. Cancel. Discard all. Here's our file. file. You see the extension on the end says Studio 3. Gray, black, stitching. Just double click on it. Now that you have the software installed, double click. Give it a minute. Okay. 
can it that will open up the software your silhouette studio you have may not say designer edition I'm not sure what it's called the free version I have the updated version the upgrade give it a minute and there it is so you don't have to do anything again you just open this and print it and that's all there is to it I hope this was good if you don't understand anything please email me in the paper closet at gmail.com I'll try to answer your questions if you're having problems so I hope you give it a try next time we do this if you like this type of process I can show you how to do away with the stitching and just I'll show you the ones that I did I don't know how close I can get here instead I put a black border around my photo I inserted the photo I can show you how to do that and then I put some text at the bottom this way you have a little journaling on it or you can actually journal a little description of what was going on birthday party or and that's all you just so you have a little black border and then the gray and then you, your photo would you would print this on photo paper directly so there's no need for the map so we'll get into that next time so please subscribe and hit the like button subscribe and you'll be notified when my next videos come up and you'll see when I have another part of this the one for the photos okay so thank you for coming I hope you understand this and like I said if you have any problems just email me okay I'll be back soon thank you for watching bye